Kunal, yeah, uh, bro, yes, at, uh, three at three thirty. I'll uh, just remove the banner because the recording might be affected. You will remove the banner. Yeah, I'll just remove the banner at three thirty, and you guys can start uh, talking to the students. Okay, sure. So, so, I think uh, it's almost time. Yeah. Okay. Tell me when to. Uh, Okay, John, we'll have to leave it there for a while, eh? When we start discussing yeah. the Yeah, at 3.30, I'll put the banner down. Okay, I can start now. I can see a few students are there already. Uh, there's a... Okay, good, uh, good afternoon to everyone that are listening. Welcome to the uh, year 13 uh, tutorial uh, for computer science and mathematics. Uh, this uh, tutorial is uh, provided by the uh, computer science and mathematics department of the uh, University of Fiji under the School of Science and Technology. Uh, welcome, I'm uh, Mr. John Evukinangauna. Um, lecturer and head of the Department of Computer Science and Mathematics. Uh, with me, I have uh, uh, Nirad Sarma as a lecturer as well at the uh, University of Fiji uh, in a uh, green t-shirt. And we have uh, Mr. Kunal Kumar, a lecturer as well uh, with us here at the uh, Computer Science and Mathematics in the uh, School Good of Science. Name, uh, also joining us is our professor, uh, Professor Sokot Ali. Uh, he's there with us as well in the background. Uh, welcome to uh, this tutorial. I can see um, yes, still students are uh, coming in. We have um, a few students there. Uh, Avinash Narayan, um, yeah, Natasha Ram, Zanalal. I think some uh, teachers there as well that have uh, joined. Um, uh, that have joined us. So uh, we have um, Rinda Tapu, Hena Kumar, Tikaram, Rishma Verma, uh, Mith uh, Pile, Muhammad, Ozin, uh, Rushika Singh, and um, Zara Begum, and Sanal I've mentioned already. Uh, thank you uh, for those, um, and I think Mr. Avinash Narayan may be a school teacher uh, with uh, some students there in the background. Right. Um, before we uh, start uh, giving you some uh, questions, uh, we would like you to give us some questions. You can uh, write in the questions. Um, there's a chat uh, uh, place there, chat messages where you can write your um, uh, questions up. So we'll give you a few minutes just to um, write those uh, uh, questions that you have for us there. Then after that, we'll uh, uh, be giving you uh, questions. Um, from our side, we'll have uh, the computer science and the office technology uh, subjects as well. Eh? So if you have any questions, um, please do write on the um, uh, chat uh, page that is there on the screen, eh? on the uh, Google Meet uh, screen. So um, 
if you have any questions uh don't be scared do uh uh ask us those questions or type it in and um we'll have them answered during the session eh? i can see a uh, 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 student still uh coming in thank you uh, to those students that are joining uh, so the number is still going uh, up um okay we'll give you um one or two minutes uh if you can uh, uh type in the message or the question on the uh, chat box eh? so there's about uh, three uh, 30, yeah, 334 so by 335 if there's no questions uh, we'll give you the questions and you can um, uh, answer them eh? but before that uh, there is um, a link there in front um, uh, you can start filling it in uh, there's a form which you have to uh, uh, fill in eh? and um, while you are listening and doing the question uh, there's a year uh, 13 uh, form there eh? I, I i will just uh, uh, share it uh, for the time being. Uh, okay. Okay. So this is the form that we we filled up. So what you do, you just um, enter your full name there, your email address in the second uh, block there. And uh, the school you currently attend, and the uh, uh, phone contact there, eh? and you click uh, submit. If you maybe if your teacher is joining, your teacher can fill it in, um, uh, uh, fill it in for you. Eh? So there you are. That's the uh, form that we want you to. Uh, uh, fill in while you are uh, watching from there eh? okay so now these are uh, two minutes so what uh, we'll do we'll uh, uh, give you the questions uh, okay the question is the the first question i'll um i'll just uh Read it out. Are you ready? Can you hear me? Uh... Okay, but if you want to uh, ask a question uh, verbally from there, you can just lift your hand. There's a hand, uh, raise your hand up. Otherwise, you can just uh, type it in there on the uh, chat box. Eh? Okay, we'll uh, start with the first question since uh, no one is asking uh, questions at the moment. So we'll ask you the questions. Eh? And um, the first uh, question is, uh, okay, explain the, um, explain why data is usually the most valuable part of a computer system. That is the first uh, question. I'll put it in the uh, uh, chat box. So I'll give you um, yeah, one or two minutes. Uh, 3.37 now. Um, so by 3.39, you should be able to uh, answer. Or you can type in it. Type in that message there in your chat uh, at the chat box. Or for those who are listening there, you can uh, uh, raise your hand up. Thank you, thank you, thank you for those. Thank you, Nivriti Shaman. Okay, waiting for the rest.
why is data yeah why is data usually the most valuable part of a computer system so in any computer system why is that data uh, very uh, important or valuable yeah and every two years yes go ahead you uh, yeah, think in terms of uh, data uh, good afternoon everyone um so i'll be discussing the question uh, so uh, our main aim here is to give you a refresher for the exam that you have coming up next week and what we'll try to do here what we actually want is to use to uh, for you to ask us questions so that we can actually discuss things that are more challenging to you and things uh, that you need more explanation with and we'll try to give you our perspective and our solutions and our understanding of how uh, you can solve those problems and we will we are trying to help you solve the problems in a way that's easy for you to understand that's what we're trying to do so you're welcome to ask any questions if you want you can type the answers in the chat box you can talk as well there's no restriction right so feel free uh, we are not here to judge you and uh, we, we won't scold you so and remember any answer is uh, no answer is incorrect okay it's all about perception and how you look at the question Thank you, thank you, Kunal. Yeah, thank you, Anish Narayan. So, Nivriti, Chairman said we can access information through data. Uh, that's correct to some extent, but information you have to understand can only be extracted if we organize the data in more meaningful way so we're, we're actually talking about the value of data so it does give us uh, information if we organize the data in uh, in some meaningful way so that it gives us information that we can use and it does give us access to information but there are other things that data gives us as well some very common and uh, important things Just think in terms of what would happen if you lost the data. So what would happen if you lost the data from your laptop, from your workstation or your mobile devices? What will happen? How will that affect you? Anyone with the answer? Okay, so, so the um, I'll, I'll give you the answer, right? Because we have to discuss a lot of questions and we'll try to cover as much as we can. Uh, the most important thing would be if there's loss of data, right? Then that would actually result in um, financial loss. It can result in financial loss if the data is critical data and you need it in your day-to-day -day operations especially if you're working right and even if you lose data something like data for about your assignments or something you're doing right then you're losing time right so you're losing productivity okay so there is the financial loss and then there is loss of productivity because of the loss of data and when we talk about devices and data right if your laptop is lost you can get it back right you can get a similar model and then you can go buy another one right save some money and buy another one but you cannot get the exact same data right if you've written an essay and you've lost it then you cannot get that essay back exactly word by word right whatever you've written so that's the importance of data right once you lose it if you don't have a backup copy then it becomes difficult to get it back and if it's very critical data you'll have financial losses otherwise you'll have loss of productivity Anyone has any questions? Andy Vere has presented her screen, I think by mistake. Are you trying to present something, uh, Andy Vere?
Okay, so anyone else with any questions? Remember, we want questions from you because we we want to understand what you have difficulty with. Okay, ask us questions that you have any challenging questions that you want us to explain to you that will help you in the exams. Right, you're welcome to ask. Okay. Or you can put it in the chat box as well. Thank you, uh, Kunal. Uh, we've got a second uh, question there. Uh, one of the advantages of using the internet uh, is it allows greater communication between all people throughout the world. You have to explain uh, these advantages. So it says they are one of the advantages of using the internet. It allows greater communication between all people throughout the world. So you have to explain uh, these advantages. You can um, raise your hand up or you can type in the answers there okay? on the uh, chat uh, messages. Anyone? We'll give you uh, two minutes, eh? Uh, 345, yeah. Say 347, eh? Explain, uh, just give any advantages. Um, one of the advantages there, but you have to just explain that advantage. Yeah, you'll have to basically uh, identify in the terms of application which is available that allows people to communicate via internet. Eh? So there are a lot of uh, softwares which are available, applications, apps which are available. You can basically put your answer in that particular context. It enables, this is one of the answers which you can have as well. It enables people to communicate through video chats that allows meetings and so on as well. Okay. Um, others as well, you can uh, note down your answers. Example, Zoom classes. Yes, that's very good. Anyone else? Saves time. Yeah, in some way you can say it saves time in terms of like uh, uh, if you are planning to meet someone uh, or talk to someone who is uh, located far away or is in a different country or continent then usually it saves uh, time traveling wise, cost wise as well. So you can directly communicate with them um, via applications such as uh, Messenger, uh, Viber, okay? IMO, WhatsApp, Skype is there as well, okay? Uh, Hena Kumar, uh, it makes communication easier and faster. Example, texting is easier then handwritten letters yes okay this is through the available of the internet uh, which allows people to actually uh, communicate message uh, through messengers okay uh, through social media sites as well okay so basically this means that for example if family and friends are located all over the world are distant from loved ones through the use of emails and social media which are accessible uh, through the internet helps families and friends stay in touch without being physically present okay which saves traveling cost and time as well okay and at the same time we have applications such as um, imo viber whatsapp skype okay this type of applications which basically help out with the, the greater communication between people throughout the world okay so taking into the context of uh, uh, in terms of the pandemic and how it affects 
students and classes as well we now have zoom okay we have google meet which allows communication uh, from lecturer to student or teacher to student uh, interaction okay uh, if you do have any other like uh, feedback or uh, points on that you can note it down within the chat section thank you uh, uh Raj. okay uh yeah there's a lot of answers there given thank you it's good to uh, uh someone says uh, some details give some examples so every answer you uh give your examples um, with the app that you're using and so on eh? okay uh the next question here from uh, the computer science uh, differentiate between the ram and rom ram and uh, rom so 350 now so I'll give you uh, two minutes or even one minute you can easily answer that eh? Yes, this is a very basic question about two very basic um, um, hardware that um, most computers have. RAM is also called memory. Think in terms of how data is stored in each. Yes, um, Nivriti uh, Shaman, um, um, totally correct, okay? RAM stores uh, temporary data, okay? It's uh, the term that we use for temporary data is uh, volatile data, okay? Volatile means something that keeps changing. So RAM uh, stores uh, volatile data, okay? That means temporary data. So once RAM uses the data, the data has been used, the data is deleted, and then new data comes in while ROM stores uh, non-volatile data, that means permanent data, okay? Once you store it, until you delete it, it's there, okay? Uh, Risha says RAM is used to store programs and data being used by CPUs. Yes, that's correct. While ROM is a memory where data is uh, pre-recorded. Yeah, totally true, okay? Totally correct. Any other answers? So, Chani, we can move on to the next question because we have a lot of questions. Yeah, thank you, uh, Niraj. Thank you to those who have answered that. Uh, the next question there is um, uh, on the chat uh, box. Uh, states any two things that an email user should keep in mind while using email. That should be very easy. I think all you... Uh, Yes, it should have an email and um, should be able to answer that question. Okay. So this could be any two things uh, which you can uh, note over here uh, in terms of uh, the user's point of view, how you are interacting with a particular email that you receive or when you are replying to a particular email as well or you are sending a new email to someone okay or you are getting a particular email from outside so think uh, in that particular context um the answer for question number two is it um correct address and um log out when you're done yep there is a uh, these are two uh, important things as well. You need to know 
uh, the correct email address to the person that you're trying to send the email to. And obviously, whenever you are using a particular account, it's always good to log out, okay, from your account. Thank you, thank you, Avinesh. What about others? There are a lot of like uh, uh, things to keep in mind uh, in terms of uh, having an email uh, account and things you should keep in mind. Yeah, one more minute, uh, then we'll, uh, you can answer them. Eh? Yeah. Yes, a uh, moment. You've raised your hand. You can answer the question if you want. Or if you want to uh, simply uh, type the answer within the chat box, and that's fine as well. OK, so uh, with this type of question, um, there's a lot of answers with this, right? You can uh, generally keep note of two things, OK? Uh, Roshika says, uh, can it be language? Yeah, uh, you should always think about the people whom you are trying to send the message to. Uh, and then the type of message you are trying to send as well. Okay, so always uh, keep in mind, like not everyone is uh, like uh, familiar with certain languages. Okay, although in Fiji everyone uh, has to know English, but uh, for example, if you are typing something in uh, in the OI two K, then it would be difficult for a person who doesn't understand this language. It would be really difficult for them to understand it. Eh? Anish, uh, okay, uh, message body signature solutions. Uh, yeah, you can include these, but uh, in terms of uh, like uh, how, uh, like uh, some of the important things we, we can include, eh? signatures are important, message body is also important as well. So always think twice before clicking on reply all, okay, because uh, you don't know whom you are sending the email uh, to, because you need to always see whom the messages are going to be, uh, whom uh, the messages are going to go to. Okay, be aware of cultural differences as well, similar to what Roshika has said as well. Uh, Reread and review your email before sending it. And also test the link whenever you are trying to send a particular link for someone to actually access that particular link. For example, if you are trying to send your friend a particular YouTube video link, a tutorial link, for example, uh, discussing something uh, regarding computer science, for example. Then obviously do click and see whether the link is uh, open correctly or not. Okay, and uh, never open suspicious mails as it might be a virus that might ruin your machine. Okay, because we can we get a lot of emails from outside, uh, and that says that you have won a lottery, or please can you uh, sign into this particular account because we need to send in some money to you. Okay, these are all obviously uh, fake emails, spam emails. Okay, always be aware of these type of mails. Okay. Okay, thank you, uh, Nira. There's a few other students have answered there. Um, uh, JT. Oh. Yeah. yeah, so we are, uh, the question we are on is uh, basically uh, state two things that an email user should keep in mind while using email. Okay. Um, notion, personal details can be hacked. Depends if you are like, uh, if you try to send the information via email to someone. For example, your login credentials, such as your email ID and the password, you're trying to send it to someone else, and then you do not know whom you are sending it to. And for, for example, if you uh, like uh, uh, send it to multiple different people, okay, so it's never a good idea to actually share your login credentials with anyone. Okay. Okay. Thank you, uh, Niraj. Uh, we'll go on to uh, computer size. Um, third question: The computer size is in what ways? might equipment be damaged during an installation? Uh, 
Right. For this uh, for this session, um, we're talking about computer hardware. So think about um, you repairing or um, trying to install a computer system, whether it's a workstation or you are trying to change RAM on a, a laptop or any computer device. How can you damage it in the process? <coughs> Andy Bede has raised her hand. Would you like to answer? Hi, Andy Bede. Are you trying to give us an answer? Yeah, Andy Bede, you can speak now. We can't hear you. Okay, maybe she clicked on it by mistake. Um, okay, let's look at some answers. Uh, Anish has... So Anish Narayan has said... Uh... Yeah, go okay, ahead, so... So Anish Narayan has said electrostatic discharge. Um, uh, and um, Jade Singh is saying, can I get a few tips on how to understand coding? Oh, we have a few questions on coding, Jade. Uh, just give us a few minutes and we'll get to it. Um, so electrostatic discharge. Uh, can anyone explain what electrostatic discharge is? It's a very interesting concept. And it can damage uh, electronic components of a computer very easily. Does anyone know what electrostatic discharge is? The, uh, I don't know if you if we've done this or not, right? But uh, when we were in school, we used to rub our pens in our hair and then try to pick up small pieces of paper. Has anyone done that? See, if you rub a balloon on your hair, right? And just try not to pop it, right? If you rub a balloon on your hair, right? And if you don't pop it, right? And you take it to um, any element, right? That is either charged or even not charged, right? Then it will try to attract that, okay? So if you rub a pen in your hair and you rub long enough, right? And you take it to a small piece of paper, the paper will stick to it, okay? It's electrostatic discharge that comes out of that rubbing that you have, uh, you do, right? That process that happens, okay? And that, that is very harmful for computer as computers electronic components, right? Such as processors and electronic components on RAMs, so on and so forth. Okay. Okay, any more answers? Um oh, Mohammed Sajid has said electronic discharge is an activity that occurs when charges on separate objects are unequal, right? And they either attract or repel, okay, depending on the charges that both the components have. Right. Any more any more answers? How else can you damage a um, computer, right? while you're trying to repair it. Some very common answers. You might screw, um, you might be too rough with the screwdriver, right? And you tighten the screws too hard and you'll damage the um, actual um, screws or the component of the computer, okay? Right, and you have to be very careful when dealing with hardware, right? So make sure you don't drop any um, hardware components right of a computer right because they can be damaged very easily right and you also have to be very patient when installing or repairing a computer right because there are so many elements that come together and they need to come in perfectly together okay if you rush through the process then you might damage something okay those are some of the answers for that question thank you kunal we'll go on to the next uh, question there on office uh, technology um there on the chat message you can see it one benefit of online marketing is that it can be implemented faster than traditional methods explain the stated uh, benefit so yeah over to you okay. yeah so with this type of question you need to understand first of all try to identify uh what is online marketing and then uh, what is traditional uh, marketing methods okay and then you can basically once you understand these two then it will be easier for you to answer the particular question so we give you uh, two minutes 
to everyone. broader audience okay um in what context uh online you mean okay yeah uh that's one benefit okay online you have uh, uh because uh, this is the era of technology and everyone almost everyone has now uh, smartphones uh computers they are able to uh, access uh for example, websites, uh, their social media sites, and uh, advertisements are nowadays uh, highly done on social media sites, eh? as you know. So, broad audience is uh, within that as well. Um, Notion says it uh, saves time as we don't have to visit shops. Okay. Uh, in terms of if you are trying to uh, look for a particular product, okay, then. Uh, majority of uh, shops nowadays you'll be able to see that they have the pamphlets available online some of them are now implementing e-commerce sites uh, within their shops as well so that uh, you can directly purchase the item from their shop and then the uh, particular item gets delivered to you at your house directly so you don't have to actually visit the particular shop what uh, what about uh, other benefits so talking about the traditional form of advertising, okay, um, the traditional form was uh, through the use of newspaper, TV advertisements, okay, and uh, these all generally take a lot of time as well, okay. For example, if you'll have to first of all prepare the advertisement and then send it out uh, to the newspaper, and then it usually takes two or three days to actually advertise for a particular product. Whereas when you compare that with online, you'll be able to do it instantly. You'll be able to design the entire advertisement directly on your computer. And then at the same time, you'll be able to advertise, okay, through, for example, uh, Facebook, okay, Facebook Marketplace, uh, which is more uh, popular nowadays for um, in terms of when you talk about digital marketing, okay. So this basically helps businesses market their product more efficiently at very little cost, okay, when you compare. Uh, saying, sending an advertisement through a newspaper generally takes two or three grand, two or three thousand dollars, okay, just to uh, put up a ad on one particular day's, uh, for example, on Saturday's paper, okay, whereas you can spend a little amount and uh, simply use digital marketing concept and uh, advertise your product directly online. And uh, you can basically, with that, you can gauge where you want to advertise, what range of uh, uh, people you're trying to uh, provide this particular post to this particular product to and the age group as well so there's a lot of things with that uh, when it comes to online marketing uh, when it comes to digital marketing as well okay yeah uh, any other benefits you have you can uh, note it down within the chat section thank you uh niraj um thank you to those who have answered those who are listening uh, the, I'll put on the next question. The next question is a, a, a programming question. Someone asked about uh, programming, so I'll put it there on the um, as a chat screen. Write a program that displays data in the following format. And the format is there. First thing is uh, year 13. And, uh, in the second line is uh, first name and last name. And on the third line is uh, Kaushik Lal. And the fourth line, uh, Avines uh, Chandra. So we'll give you two, two to three minutes eh, to answer this uh, question. You can uh, write it in there. You can raise your hand. And after that, uh, we'll ask Akunal to uh, answer it for everybody. Eh? Right, yeah. Uh, just focus on the um, core of the question, right? Just how you will display. Don't worry about the structure. You can just write the output statements, how you'll write the output statements. I'll give you the solution in a while. Right. Okay. 
just try to answer this right um this is the core of information technology right and computer science and this is essential right Right, so Junia is saying, uh, yes, he out. So basically, he's, he's correct in the sense that um, in C++, right, um, output statements are written using C out, okay? The C in for input statements and C out for output statements. Anyone else wants to add on to it? Okay, I'll let me give you the solution and let's discuss the solution. Okay, now again, um, you just have to format the output, right? Similar to what the question is saying, and it's very important, right, for your exams that you um, look at the questions, read the questions very carefully, right, and you answer the question, right, and you answer whatever the question is asking. Okay, do not data from it. Okay, there are a couple of ways you can do that, right? Um, what Junior has done on top is. Uh, Junior is outputting first name, and then after that, Junior has given a space. Okay, so computer programs understand space as another character. Okay, it's not like what we see. Okay, so this here is a space in between. Okay, so we we'll give a space, and then the second name will be given. Okay, and what we have used here is a tab, right? Both are fine. Okay, you can give a space between the name, or you can use a Tab character okay this is the escape character and what this will do is it will give a space between first name and last name okay now let's discuss the whole program okay this is very important okay whenever you write any uh, program okay whenever you write any code right the things that you need to understand is right the couple of things that you need to understand first is the structure of the code itself okay if you look at c plus plus there is a standard structure that you have to follow okay right on top you have the global declarations include iostream.h okay so you probably must have just worked with iostream right and you're basically working with the terminal right so your output normally would come in a black screen right if you use dev c plus plus right but different ids different softwares give you different types of outputs and different types of windows right but it doesn't matter right your output will come in a terminal okay so once you understand the structure right just look at the structure, right? You have right on top the global declaration, right? After that, you have this int main. This is a method, okay? And these things will always be there, right? You cannot write any code without this global declaration on top and without this int main, okay? This main method. And this main method is there in all the other programming languages. I've worked with four or five languages, okay? They all have this, okay? This main method is where the program starts okay without this your application will not work so the first thing you need to know is right keep it in your head right that these things must be there this first line include and then io stream all the um, characters the hash and then the arrows and then int main with the brackets and then after that you have this calibrate okay this calibrate starts here and ends right at the bottom okay and what that calibrate simply means is that is the body of that method okay so once you understand that it's all a matter of writing your code okay in this case we're just trying to display four lines okay year 13 first name last name right and then kaushik lal and avinesh chandra okay and that's what we're doing right see out year 13 right and then the statement ends with end one okay and then C out and one will give you a space, right? It will, it will give you a space, right? And then first name and last name, they're separated by a tab, right? And then in the next line, again, C out gives you Koshik Lal and Koshik and Lal are separated by double tabs, okay? So it will have a bigger space in between, okay? And then again, Avinash Chandra has a bigger space in between because it has two tabs 
and likewise Sumit Prasad and so on and so forth. Okay, and right in the end, you must have system polls. This is telling the compiler to end the application here, and we are done. Okay, so make sure the structure you remember always this include IO stream into main and the curly braces should always be there. The system pose should always be there at the end of the program. And after that, what you have to think about writing is this body. Okay. Once you have the structure figured out, you have it in your head. The only thing you need to worry about is the body. Okay. And it will become much easier to write your applications. Right. So in this, we're just focusing on output. There is no input, right? We have time we'll focus on a, another question where we have input and other things as well okay so okay once again once you understand the structure right you just need to focus on the body okay there's yeah end l right is it end one or end l yeah should be end l yeah small l small l yeah, end l right it should be end l yeah end line okay right so once you understand that writing the application will be very easy okay uh backward slash t represents tab okay when have you, if you use tab on your keyboard, right, it will give you a space, right? If you use tab in Microsoft Word, right, it will give you a space, okay, right in front of the text. Right, so that's what tab does here, okay? It will give you a space between the words. I Any think it was... <coughs> okay, another question from the... Um... Uh, office technology what is ergonomics so you can answer that uh one or two minutes yeah <laughs> yeah I can, yeah i can see yeah see some yeah. uh Oh, Economics, uh, uh, it is the study of yes. uh, the relationship between people and their working environment. Yes, that is correct. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what others uh, have to say with that as well. Okay, so basically ergonomics is the science concerned with designing safe and comfortable machines for humans. Okay, so it is also the study of people at work that aims to reduce the physical stress, which may result in injuries. Okay, and uh, this is to do with uh, having poor postures, okay, while uh, sitting at a discomfort position uh, where your screen is not aligned with your eye as well, where the chair that you're sitting on is not comfortable as well. Uh, for example, it's leaning to one side and that could basically result to a lot of uh, uh, injuries to do with your body. Okay. So ergonomic aims to reduce such injuries by designing workspace tools, uh, tasks and equipment that may help maintain the physical health of, of workers. Okay. So I think uh, there are some questions relating to um, the escape character. <laughs> Kundal? Yeah, T is for tab. Yeah. T, uh, actually, the difference between tab and space is space is a bit smaller than tab, OK? Just uh, so, just try out tab on Microsoft Word, and you'll understand the difference. Right? When you press tab, it gives you a big space in front, OK? That's what tab means, right? But essentially, it is giving you a space in between, okay? Yeah, within your system, you can use character. either. Yes. Either the space or you can use the escape character T. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, Anish? Um, sir, uh, just a question on, uh, on programming. 
uh, you have used uh, for uh, backslash t in the first line of code and then in the second line of code you have used uh, double t backslash and t so i'm just uh, curious why is that is that for double tap spacing or is it just the syntax no no it means double tap so we're just trying to format it in a way that looks looks good right so uh, double tap simply means double space okay does that answer your question anish yes yeah. sir thank you thank you anish um Yeah, we'll uh, give, uh, if there's no other there, we'll give in the next uh, uh, question on uh, programming. Uh, question is, um, yeah, uh, write a program using if selection structure that identifies if the person has passed or failed. The user is required to enter his or her mark out of 100. If the mark is greater than or equal to 50, the person has passed. Yeah, so we give you a yeah, few minutes, maybe two or three minutes. We've got about 10 minutes left for this session. Um, so let's this say... One uh, emphasizes, this one emphasizes on decision-making statements. Again, very important in programming, okay? Just write the answer in terms of the body, okay? Just write the body for now, right? We don't have time to go over the, the, for you to write the whole structure. So let's just uh, just write the answer in terms of just the body, right? And we'll discuss it very soon. Mm. Yeah, someone is a uh, log on. Yeah, Junior is uh, has declared a variable int mark. Right, that's fine. So that variable is just a small container that's going to store the mark itself. Okay. Right, C in mark. So that's what that is what is going to be entered by. The user, right? That is what is going to come in. Right. Right. So if mark is greater than or equal to fifty. Right, and what are we going to do? We passed. Right. Okay, so Junior is on the right track. Um, I can give you the answer that I have. Right, so this is the answer that I have, right? Just remember there's no fixed answer here, right? You can, programs are very flexible, right? And sometimes it all depends on the programmer's choice, okay? So let's quickly discuss this question, right? So once again, if you look at the structure, we have two variable declarations right there on top, right? We are accessing IO stream and then we are accessing standard um, lib.h, okay? That looks like one, right? And that's why that's L, right? Anyways, there's a font, right? Okay, so we need these two libraries for our codes, right? because IO stream gives you C in and C out, how to get data in and out, while standard lib will give you access to decision-making statements, if and else, okay? If you don't have them, then you won't be able to write if and else statements, right? So again, you have the main method there, right? And then the body, once you have got that covered, the only thing you need to worry about is this body, okay? Starting from here, this is the body that I have been talking about, okay? 
right from here and below okay so what we're doing here right let's quickly discuss it so float mark right so junior used int i'm using float it doesn't matter right you can use whichever variable you want both of them are not very big variable types so they'll be able to store value 50 right both are correct okay int and float both are correct right so this here is a variable variables we look at them as a container that stores something in a program okay so that it can be used later okay now after that we are just uh displaying this out to the user enter the mark and after this the user is going to enter the mark itself okay so c out will display the message to the user okay to enter the marks code and then c in is where the user will actually enter the mark and it comes in okay and after that this is your decision making statement if and else okay this is very important okay so this is the syntax right if and then in brackets you have mark and then greater than equal to 50 so that means if mark is greater than equal to 50 then you're going to output congratulations you have passed and end l end of the line okay and move on to the next line else see out better luck next time you have failed okay so this is the structure of if and else right if this statement is true then we will print out this okay. otherwise we go to else and print out better luck next time you have failed and then finally we have end line here right so that ends the statement the system poses and we are retaining zero so we are not actually retaining anything okay but that is again a syntax that you have to follow okay Thank you, Kunal. Um, Ira, do you have anything to say there? Uh, yeah, I think it was uh, yeah, a good explanation back now. Yeah, some, I think, students are inquiring about uh, uh, flowcharts. Uh, could you please elaborate on what issues are you facing with them? We need to understand yeah. what your challenges are. Uh, or what uh, what issues do you have with the flowchart? Are you talking about flowcharts of how the program works? Manvi uh, Kumar asks for the uh, to emphasize on the flow chart. Manvi, are you still there? If not, I think uh, because we have time uh, catching up so fast, um, uh, what we'll do, we can put our emails there on the um, uh, chat box, which uh, we, you can send us uh, those uh, uh, questions uh, through the emails. Eh? Um, through the emails but we have uh, one i think one question uh, left from the uh, uh, the um, office technology uh, the question is um, uh, define the this is a very easy question define the term internet but you need to get that uh, correctly eh? uh, find the term uh, the internet okay uh, yeah so let's see what uh, students have to say with that this particular question you may have your own understanding of what the internet is okay so you're most welcome to write whatever you understand and whatever you interpret with this particular terminology So, internet is simply networks of networks. Uh, you can say that technically. What about others? Okay, provides connection between computers to expand the ah. usefulness of uh, information systems. Oh, yeah. Network of networks, physical network, 
and spend that spends around the world okay so we are getting in good uh, suggestions uh, from students so basically the internet is a worldwide system of interconnected computers to dissipate general information uh, about almost anything using internet protocol rules to save billions of people all over the world okay so that is the general uh, definition so i'll just uh, put this up over here as well so that you can all have a look at that as well so this is the correct definition of the term internet okay so i think junior has raised some uh, questions regarding flowchart so declaring variables on flowchart and how user is going to input uh, such variables example uh, variable time how would we put that on flowchart yeah, i think they're talking about uh, flowchart in terms of how the execution of the flow of um, statements okay how the program flow happens okay you can yeah. send us emails for your queries and we'll help you out with the flow charts and or any other queries you have you have the emails there right um, because we've uh, come to the end of the session probably and so just send us the um, questions in our email address and um, we'll be able to help you out so either send it to chone v at unifiji or you can send it to kunal k and put in my email there Yeah, so if any question, please do email us. I uh, would be happy to actually assist you with any particular queries that you have uh, before your exams. Yeah, and do fill in that uh, form that we gave in in the uh, first, when we started off. The um, form was shared at the beginning, um, right on top of the uh, chat uh, messages. There's a link, do fill that in. Uh, then we can get in touch with you. Eh? And our emails are there uh, from the University of uh, Fiji. Uh, mine is there, Chonevi uh, at unifiji.ac.fj. Uh, Kunal uh, there as well. Um, Kunal, uh, K-U-N-L-K at unifiji.ac.fj. And Niraj, S at unifiji.ac.fj. Okay, that uh, comes to an end uh, for our time. Um, uh, someone is asking, okay, we, uh, at the moment, uh, uh, our emails are there. When you send a, a question, just email all the three of us. So we are all in touch uh, with you. Eh? Um, yeah, that'll be the best way to think. Yes. Uh, so your exams is sometimes uh, next week, I think on the 4th. Uh, we wish you all the best uh, in your exams uh, that is uh, coming up. Uh, and if you still have any questions, you ask us. Oh, it's on the right on the 11th, eh? 11th of Feb. Uh, so you have um, uh, a lot of this to study. And if you are um, thinking of um, sending us a question, don't be scared. Send us uh, the questions that you need to be solved. Eh? OK, once again, yeah, you can see the uh, information being sent there by the university. Uh, it'll be it's recorded you can download that uh, this session today uh, at that site there eh? and um, Kunal and uh, Nira do you have anything to say yeah uh, just to wish you the best <laughs> yeah Kunal you can go ahead <laughs> uh, best of luck for your exams um, everyone um, some of the students are requesting for another session um, well, for now just email us your queries because um, this has to go for the university so. We'll see what we can do. But you, you're always welcome to just email us your queries and we'll be able to help you out, right? In whatever way possible. Yeah. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining in. Uh, if there's any questions, queries, uh, especially regarding the uh, issues that were not uh, discussed today, please feel free to message us um, via email. Uh, we'll definitely try to uh, help you out as soon as possible. And uh, yeah, just like to wish all the best for your exam.
and I hope to see some of you at least at Unifiji next year, uh, this year, sorry. Yeah, once again, uh, we'll end there. All the best uh, to your exams and um, think of the university. When if you pass your exams or you fail, you still can join us uh, through the uh, year 12 through the foundation uh, studies. Eh? Uh, once again, we'll uh, end there. Thank you uh, to everyone that are listening and to those uh, listening to this recording. Those who missed out, they can see this recording. Uh, wish you all the best. Eh? Okay, so we'll uh, end there, Kunal and Niraj. Thank you for your time.